Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to give a gentle introduction to valence bond theory. So under valence bond theory, electrons are treated in a quantum mechanical fashion. In contrast to say something like Lewis theory, in which electrons are treated as just dots. Although we don't know everything there is to know about electrons, we certainly know enough so that we can confidently say that electrons are more complex than just dots, and they're better treated in terms of quantum mechanics. And by that I mean that instead of pinpointing the exact location of an electron, uh, the better thing to do would be to map out a region of space in which the electron is more likely to spend its time within a certain degree of probability and that probability is usually about 90 percent and those regions of space are referred to as atomic orbitals so the standard atomic orbitals the s orbitals p orbitals d orbitals and f orbitals those are just regions regions of space in which the electrons are more likely to spend their time so in valence bond theory uh, the electrons within atoms are sometimes treated as residing in these standard atomic orbitals. Sometimes uh, this is not a good treatment. Uh, sometimes the concept of hybrid orbitals is invoked. And basically what hybrid orbitals are is they're just combinations of the standard atomic orbitals. So it all really depends on the observed properties of the molecule. Uh, which uh, which treatment is better, whether the standard atomic orbital treatment is better or whether it's better to treat the electrons as if they reside in combinations of those atomic orbitals that we call hybrid orbitals. So uh, before I get any further with valence bond theory, I'd like to uh, just talk about the, the origin or the driving force behind uh, bonding in general. So suppose I have uh, two atoms, like say two two hydrogen atoms, and they are uh, bonded together. Uh, so basically, well, what's going on there? You have the electron cloud and the nucleus of one atom interacting with the electron cloud and the nucleus of the other atom. And if you were to map out the potential energy of those interactions as a function of the distance between the two atoms, then you would get a curve that looks something like this. So the right-hand side of the curve corresponds to when the atoms are fairly far apart. Uh, notice their energy is almost zero because they are not, uh, they're too far apart to interact. But as the atoms get closer and closer together, the potential energy decreases and then approaches this minimum. And this minimum value is what we call the equilibrium, well, excuse me, it's called the bond energy. And the length that corresponds uh, with this minimum bond energy is what we call the equilibrium bond length. Notice that as the, uh, as the atoms get too close together, the nuclei actually repel each other, and that corresponds with a, a, a sharp increase in potential energy. So there's this happy medium, this equilibrium bond length that corresponds to a minimum in potential energy. And the observation in terms of uh, electronic properties is that this minimum of, of energy is achieved when the electrons, ex excuse me, the atomic orbitals that are interacting together contain two spin paired electrons. And that just means that their electrons, there's two of them, and they have opposite spins. So it's kind of like they're occupi occupying a single orbital. So this is rationalized in terms of an overlap between two orbitals. So, and there's two ways that orbitals can uh, overlap to give you uh, two spin paired electrons. Uh, one of the ways, uh, the more common of the two, is when two half filled orbitals combine. And the other less common uh, situation is when a full orbital, a full atomic orbital, combines with an empty atomic orbital. So, this is described in terms of an overlapping of orbitals. And the geometry of the molecule uh, is a direct result on the geometry of the orbitals that are overlapping with one another. So if we consider uh, the bonding in a molecule such as uh, hydrogen sulfide, so hydrogen sulfide that is H2S, uh, the systematic name for this would be dihydrogen monosulfide, but I think people just say uh, hydrogen sulfide for short, even though it's uh, systematically incorrect. 
So uh, hydrogen sulfide, how, how could we describe the bonding in hydrogen sulfide according to valence bond theory? Well, remember these are, uh, you know, it's a, we're talking about uh, quantum mechanical atomic orbitals here. So a, a good place to start would be to uh, understand the ground state electron configurations of the three atoms. So the ground state electron configuration of hydrogen, well, that's pretty easy. So we have one hydrogen, another hydrogen, and a sulfur atom. Uh, ground state electron configuration of hydrogen, that's just going to be 1s1. There's a single s orbital, and it is half full. And for sulfur, the ground state electron configuration, at least uh, for the valence shell, which is the uh, shell that we're concerned with here, this is valence bond theory after all, is we have the 2s orbital and the 2p orbitals. And the configuration is 2s2, 2p4. So that's going to be something that looks like this. So notice that we have two half-filled uh, 2p orbitals on the sulfur atom, and then each of the hydrogens has a half-filled 1s orbital. So the idea is maybe the uh, 1s orbital from the hydrogen can combine or can overlap with the 2p orbital on the sulfur. So maybe these orbitals uh, can overlap. So if we were to draw this out, uh, in three dimensions. Well, I'm going to attempt to draw it out in three dimensions. It may not look good, but uh, just you know, bear with me. So, let's see if I can fit it over here on the right. So let's start with the uh, sulfur atom. We have our s orbital. So this spherical orbital is the s orbital of the sulfur atom, and then we have three p orbitals. So remember, the s orbital is a spherical. And the three p orbitals are these dumbbell-shaped orbitals that uh, orient along the x, y, and z directions. So this is my s orbital, and this is one of my p orbitals, and this is one of my p orbitals, and this is one of my p orbitals. So this is a p orbital, this is a p orbital, and this is a p orbital. And the uh, if these orbitals were uh, overlapping, then our s orbital, our two s orbital on sulfur is going to be full. So that's going to contain two electrons. And then one of the two p orbitals is going to be full. So I'm going to represent that with two electrons right here. And then the other two p orbitals are overlapping with the 1s orbitals of a hydrogen atom. So I'm going to attempt to draw that uh, right here and here. So these orbitals are overlapping with one another and there are two spin paired electrons within the space uh, in which these orbitals are overlapping here. So the geometrical uh, implications of this model when we uh, apply a simple atomic or <clears throat> orbital overlap treatment to hydrogen sulfide, well the, the p orbitals, remember, those are mutually perpendicular. And since the p orbitals are perpendicular and the uh, 1s atomic orbitals on hydrogen are just overlapping with two of the p orbitals, we would expect uh, the bond angle between the two hydrogens to be about 90 degrees. And in actuality, the bond angle is about 92 degrees. So this treatment is a, a fairly adequate treatment of hydrogen sulfide. If we just applied a Vesper theory to this, um, then we would get a bond angle of uh, about 109.5, but that's 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 much much larger than what it really is so a better treatment would be this valence bond theory 
uh, atomic orbital overlap treatment. Now, uh, that's true for hydrogen sulfide, but uh, it may not be true for other molecules, and we'll see that in future videos, that uh, sometimes the simple atomic orbitals overlapping with one another is, is, is not appropriate, and sometimes we, uh, we need to consider orbitals that can combine with one another to form these things called hybrid orbitals, which I will touch, like I said, I will touch that in another video. So uh, I hope this has helped, and uh, good luck to you guys.